2012 through 2018 Ford Focus, DPS6 dual clutch automatic transmission, DIY do-it-yourself transmission removal at home in the driveway. My hood and bumper were missing. You don't have to pull those off necessarily to do this job. Possibly the hood, but we'll get there later. Got some basic hand tools here. You will need a hex 8 millimeter for the drain plug, 3 8 drive. Ideally a swivel with a mid-deep 13 for the clutch nuts. And a swivel 3 8 drive, 13 millimeter shallow for the bell housing bolts. Short, medium, and long ratchets. 21 millimeter socket for the crank pulley. Hammer impacts are great. Penetrating oil. And I've got some basic jack stands, a jack, motorcycle jack, and an engine crane. Let's see what we can tear up today. Okay, I've got that all cleaned up there and ready to crawl under. Oh, get a long pry bar. Forgot to mention. So I already have a video out on how to pull this transmission out and do the clutch job. That is more precise and step-by-step. -step. I'm going to do my best on this one, but uh, if you have any further questions, watch that video or ask in the comments or my Facebook or Discord group, and I'm happy to help. I doubt those little jack stands will get up high enough, but we'll see. Those jack stands are probably going to sink into the pavement there. Oh well, because this is going to be on the stands for a few days at least. Let's get started, shall we? The lighting might not be perfect here, but oh well, I'm sorry. If anything is too dark, I'll shine a light on it for you. If you don't know how to take an airbox out, watch my other clutch video. Or, yeah, other transmission video there. That'll help you out. Got a rag in there so no spooters crawl in. Get this out of the way. That was a piece here for the inlet, for the air intake. Get this uh, air thing out of here. Good old air thing. This uh, clutch cable off the hook here on the mount. Just push forward and back. <clears throat> PB blaster penetrating oil. <clears throat> just needed both hands. Get this battery out of here. Just get the two 10 millimeter nuts off. Get the hole down off. Get both positive and negative terminals off, and the battery will come out. The battery tray is fastened down with three 10 millimeter bolts. They may be rusty for you. If it is, I'm so sorry, but good luck. Um, you're gonna need a air hammer with a pointy bit. I hope I don't need that. And just kind of get the air hammer in and put, cut a nudge into the bolt and try to air hammer it counterclockwise and break it loose and get it out with an impact. You'll probably break the battery tray when you do that to the rear one. Oh, thank goodness. Battery tray just slides on out of there. Get your cat claw trim tool and uh, pop this wiring retainer off of here and right here and right here. All done. Um, now go ahead and get these four nuts right here off. One, two, three, four. They're 15 millimeter. There's a 50-50 shot that you're going to have a mouse nest underneath the ABS module here. Clean it out if you do. I'm glad that the camera kind of picks up lighting a little bit better than I expected here. All right, that's the vent for the transmission. It's supposed to be in that hole right there, but this one was not. Get that out of the way. Next, get your cat claw. Look back in here. See the shifter cable right here, right in the center of the camera? Pop the cable off with your cat claw. Yeah, the lighting is just non-existent underneath this carport here. There we go. A little bit better of an angle for you there. Okay, that's off. See? Let me zoom in for you. You see that? All right. Oh, also, I'm afraid that it's only going to get worse as the sun starts to go down. It's getting to be winter time here. You're going to want to next take the bracket bolts off for the shifter cable. See where I'm shining? There's a 10 millimeter bolt there and there on that bracket. And take those out. Get an extension with a 10 millimeter socket on the end. They both came out easily. If they uh, were tough for you, you might want to run a tap down into the threads there and get new bolts. Double check that your cable is out of the hook that we that we uh, addressed earlier there. And uh, go ahead and grab. You put your fingers on the bottom of the. Um, can't think right now. The uh, shifter cable plate here. Slide it underneath the hoses. And. Uh, Get it underneath the hoses there, just like that. 
little tricky. Get it off to the side where it won't come flying out at you. This is uh, going to be a little tricky to show you here, but um, bell housing bolts are next. Zoom in, please. There's one right there, straight in the middle of the camera. And um, there's another one right there, straight in the middle. And in the back here underneath the hoses, hidden behind, there's another one. This is where, well, 6-inch extension and that Wobble 13, not this, comes in handy. That little Wobble 13 socket I showed you. Go ahead and sneak it in there with your hands and take it out with an impact or ratchet, whatever you're going to do, all three of them. Once again, if this is too fast for you, I have a little bit slower of a video that's more precise, and it's uh, in the playlist for the Focus Transmission help videos. At this point in time, it's the second most popular, and it's sorted by popularity, so you can't miss it. My back hurts. Get some ibuprofen when you do the job. All three upper bell housing bolts are out. I'm attempting to zoom in on the starter. Right in the center of the camera there. Come on. Okay, you see that stud? That is the upper starter stud. If you have that stupid shield on the starter, go ahead and uh, take the 10 millimeter mounting nuts off for that and get rid of it. It's uh, not really functional anymore after these get miles on them and the nuts get corroded and the wiring hold downs fall apart. It's no longer needed. Just um, so, if, But if you have that uh, shield on there, just go ahead and get the upper nut off while you're up here. Next, go ahead and disconnect your upper TCM connector. I'm not going to be able to show that directly on camera, but I do have a video on how to disconnect stuck TCM connectors. It goes over how to disconnect them and how they work and how to get them off if they're stuck. So it's in the playlist as well if you need that. Let's go ahead and disconnect the upper TCM connector now. It's out. Get that tucked out of the way there. That ought to work. Next, I'm going to get both front wheels off, 19 millimeter. Hopefully you don't need a 19 and a half, but uh, they may be swollen for you. Both front wheels. My wheels are stuck on, so I've got one lug nut, a few threads on, and I'm hitting the back of the tire. Preferably use a rubber hammer. Just don't hit the wheel. Just knock it off from the back. If your wheels are stuck on, go ahead and clean the corrosion off the mating surface there. And also clean the corrosion off of, holy cow, off of all this here. On each side in the front, both sides, take the 8mm bolt off, holding the brake hose on to the strut. Get both hoses, kind of pull up out of the way to allow more slack in the suspension there. Uh, get some penetrating oil and spray the top of the ball joints right in the middle of the camera right there. See that nut? That's where the ball joint pinch bolt nut is. Spray up top there next to that kind of metal hook there. You, you want to get penetrating oil on in the ball joint so it slides out easier. I am out of breath right now. <laughs> the um, Go ahead and remove both ball joint pinch bolts and nuts. I just showed you the location of the ball joint. It's the pinch bolt nut on each side. Torx 55 head on this side, 18 millimeter nut on the other side. Remove both sides. All right, I'm out of breath still. Um, each side, see this pry bar? Stick it into the hole right there into the lower control arm and uh, pull down. Try to pull the ball joint out. It's, it's stuck in there, so with my other, with one hand, I'm going to pull down on the pry bar, and the other hand, I'm going to hit the control arm right here. That's going to nudge it loose and allow it to back out. In theory, if you're having a lot of trouble, put more penetrating oil in there. Turn the wheel to the left on the left side here, and uh, get a little chisel in there and spread the ears out. You'll have to put that little metal shield to the side there to get to the little entry point there. But, uh, yeah, that's how you do that. Do both sides. Oh, I don't know how you guys do it without a lift. Oh, somebody once told me patience is a virtue. Yeah, they're right. That's, that was uh, took a minute. Now for the other side. Almost forgot. Drain the transmission fluid. I'll show you. With a drain pan. Put it underneath the transmission. Right here. That is your drain plug right there. Okay. It's a hex 8 millimeter. So get a... Hex 8 millimeter socket and a ratchet and a rag and uh, break this loose. Okay. Okay. And then it's going to drain 1.75 quarts out. I'm going to get that out by hand. Apologies if the angles get a little off here. It's kind of awkward down here. But um, my neck hurts. Okay, there's a rubber seal that's on the plug. Make sure it comes off with it. Zoom in. Looks like it did. I don't see it against the case. Okay. There it comes. Ugh. What the heck? 
Well, it smells like dual clutch transmission fluid, so that's always good. It's really not as bad as it looks. <laughs> She's oozing out. Okay, seal's on there. That's uh, that's good enough. Get it back in and tighten it. Okay, that's in. Like I said, angles are going to get awkward here. Pick your driver's side axle. And pop it out. Oh! <laughs> get you an angle here. See right here where it goes into the transmission. Yeah, it's the best I can do here. Get something in here, pop it out. Just a little pry bar or something. Maybe the same pry bar you use on the ball joints. Just pop it out, release the tension on the clip. It'll just come out and, uh, oh, then you can, uh, once it's out of the way, out of the transmission, push on the caliper this way, get it to where this axle is hanging over here. You don't have to take it out right here. You can if you want to. It's a 32 millimeter right there. Okay, I've got the axle popped out there, see? If it's uh, not popping out for you, just grab here, and turn the axle, and try again at a different index. Okay, but like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and, with my right hand, push this forward and slide this out of the way down here. Okay, um, you had to push on this quite a bit here. Don't worry, I don't think you're going to hurt me. You're not going to hurt anything. Um, get that out of the way there. The axle on the other side needs to pop out as well. Slide it over on top of the steering gear shield. It'll be fine. In order to take that axle out, give, give me a, just a break here as far as camera work goes. There's just a little strap, 13 millimeter nuts on it. That's it. And then it'll pop out. You may need to pry it, but yeah, yeah. I'll show you the aftermath there. There's the uh, passenger side axle strap and one of the two nuts. It's one time use. Uh, awkward angle, passenger side axle right here. Kind of popped out on its own since the ball joint's out. Uh, to get you orientated a little better here. So now that this is out, get this above the steering gear, which, sorry for this angle, but uh, there's the steering gear right there. Once again, my other video is better <laughs> because of the angles. I can stand out of the car, but get it on top of that shield there. All right, there it is. You see it up there? There we go. Never have I ever had so much debris fall into my eyeballs and all over my clothes. <laughs> wow. All right, next I believe I'm going to go ahead and get the two bell housing bolts up by the catalytic converter. They are better accessed from the bottom here. Okay, so I have a hard enough time showing those two bolts on under a lift. But uh, there's your catalytic converter. Oh boy, here we go, come on. The two bell housing bolts are toward the top next to the catalytic converter. Apologies, I do have a separate video entirely on getting those two bolts out, so it's in the playlist. If you need help locating them or getting them out, just look at that video. Ford Focus DPS6 bell housing bolt removal tips next to catalytic converter, and you'll find it. It's in the playlist. Get those off off camera here. I'm going to mention one more time here. The purpose of this video really is to just demonstrate differences from the other video where I pull the transmission out on the lift. So therefore, I'm doing a lot of this stuff off camera underneath. Such, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done. The two bell housing bolts I just mentioned by the cat, I backed them all the way out using a wrench and I left them in there, just not any threads in. Went on the very bottom of the transmission on the bell housing, took those two lower bell housing bolts out. Toward the side by the starter, that ground strap, I took that off, 13 millimeter nut, 13 millimeter stud behind that as a bell housing stud. Watch that other video once again if you're very confused about any of that. And now I have the 13 millimeter studs off the starter, so the starter's hanging down. Now I'm gonna get the raw restrictor lower mount, two 15 millimeter bolts on the lower mount. That's the roll restrictor right there. Black bolt and the white bolt underneath. Here's the starter. It's held on with the two studs I just mentioned. All right, location of the ground straps up here. Lower bell housing bolts are down here. Now with the starter out of the way, and I, once I take those two bolts off of the roll restrictor, I'm gonna get a 21 millimeter on the crankshaft pulley bolt. Turn the engine over clockwise. Remove the six torque converter clutch nuts off of the flywheel, and then that'll. Uh, have you down to just the last two bell housing bolts and you'll be able to drop the transmission out. Okay, I'm about ready to drop the transmission out. I'm gonna support the bottom of the oil pan with a jack of the block of wood. 
block of wood and the jack is on the oil pan supporting the engine. Now things are going to get tricky. I haven't done this before. Let's see if this motorcycle jack will work. Also known as an ATV jack. Getting the last bell housing bolt out and here comes a bunch of water out of the bell housing. <laughs> no wonder the clutch fork's locked up. Jeez. He said he had it sitting out in the yard fixing the body parts or something and, uh, and then all of a sudden the uh, transmission quit working and I think uh, some rain got in there. The last bell housing bolts out. Here's what I've got going on at the moment here. There's an eyelet on top of the transmission. I've got a bolt and nut run through. You're not going to be able to see it, are you? Yeah, you can. I don't know if this is going to work yet, but um, I definitely recommend Harbor Freight has a floor jack that has a head of a transmission jack built onto it. That would be a lot better than what I've got going on here. But uh, All right, let's see how this works out here. I'm going to lower the engine down a little bit with a jack. Um, jiggle the transmission loose off of there. Lower it down a little more and then knock that lower mount out of the way of the roll restrictor. You'll know what I'm talking about if you watch the other video. That one's more detailed. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but it's true. <laughs> oh yeah, disclaimer and all that stuff. Don't try this at home. I'm gonna crawl under there and get the roll restrictor out of the way. And I'm, my life is gonna be in the hands of this chain right here. So don't try this at home, kids and adults and everyone in between and above and below. I wonder why I couldn't come loose. I forgot to take the upper transmission mount out. All right, it's out now. So I'm just going to take that uh, mount bracket right there off. Since I'm at home, just to make things easier, three 15 millimeter bolts. One's a stud. All right, folks, it's out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo the chain here and uh, slide the transmission from under the vehicle, rehook the chain up, and get it in the back of my truck to take for take to work tomorrow. Holy cow! Would you look at this clutch? Wow, dude. <laughs> what is all this? <laughs> it's that brown stuff. Holy cow. All right. <laughs> I think I'll go ahead and stop the video there. When I go to get it back in, I'll just slide it underneath, hook it back up to that eyelet, hold it up. I might go ahead and take that lower mount all the way off right there just to help uh, with wiggle room and stuff. Kind of like I did with that upper mount bracket there okay uh talk to you guys later thanks for watching i appreciate it you have a wonderful day good luck to you